the great monarch butterfly migration is underway. In some areas, it's just a trickle at this point, but they will soon be funneling through the middle of the United States in great numbers en route to their wintering grounds in Mexico. Well, most will, but not all of them. Entomologists understand the monarch butterfly now more than they did even 20 years ago, but there is still much to learn. To be honest, it's insane. And you can drive yourself crazy trying to figure it all out. But for this video, I will attempt to simplify an extremely complicated subject. I'll get to all the nitty gritty, but let me start with the eastern population. Most people are probably aware that monarch butterflies migrate, but many may not know just how complex these journeys are. The migration of these butterflies from eastern North America to Mexico and back has been described as one of the most spectacular natural phenomena in the world. Most of the monarchs in North America, east of the Continental Divide, overwinter in the Monarch Butterfly Biosphere Reserve located in the Trans-Mexican Volcanic Belt Pine Oak Forests in a mountainous region northwest of Mexico City. Whew, say that three times fast. The butterflies cling to the trunks, branches, and needles of Oyamel fir trees, which only grow on the high slopes of certain mountains in the region. The climate where monarchs overwinter is just right, not too warm and not too cold. There are multiple generations of monarch butterflies each year. Let me start with the big one, the super generation. In late August and early September, super generation monarchs are born in the northern United States and southern Canada A. Eh? These individuals are bigger, stronger, and are able to fly much greater distances versus the other generations of monarchs. They also live eight times longer. And there is a good reason for this. Super generation monarchs begin to migrate in September. They fly south and west on the long journey to Mexico. They will feed on flower nectar along the way, and each evening they will roost in trees. Also of note, this generation is asexual for most of their lives, but more on that later. Once they reach their wintering grounds, millions of these butterflies will roost in trees and enter a sort of hibernation. Once the temperature is just right, usually mid-March, monarch butterflies leave their wintering areas and begin the migration back north to the United States. They fly to the Gulf states where they finally become sexually active and mate. After mating, females lay eggs on milkweed plants and then die. Over the summer, the individuals in the subsequent mid-generations will only live about a month or so and will mate, lay eggs, and die. It can take two or three more generations to carry the population to its northernmost range where the super generation will emerge. Because each female lays hundreds of eggs, the total number of butterflies increases throughout the summer. Before the summer ends, there are once again millions of monarchs all over the U.S. and southern Canada. So, in early autumn, the population of monarchs is at its greatest number for the entire year when the long journey begins again. And that journey is fraught with peril. Monarchs can fall victim to predators, storms, and vehicle traffic. Hello, let's take a look at this map at monarchwatch.org. If you see right here, this is the northern range of milkweed. The monarch butterflies do not breed north of this range. This up here in the northern United States and southern Canada is where the super generation of monarchs are born in August. In September, they will migrate south, as you see here, and kind of bottleneck through Texas. This whole trip from southern Canada down to their wintering area in Mexico here uh, takes about two months. And millions and millions will uh, overwinter down here in Mexico. In mid-March, the super generation starts to fly north. They get up here into the Gulf states and they become sexually active again, mate. The females will then lay eggs and die. And the males probably die soon after mating. And the next generation migrates a little further north, lays eggs, dies. The subsequent generations after that mate, lay eggs and dies. You, you get where I'm going with this until eventually the generation that produces the super generation makes its way all the way up to here in the northern United States and Canada. And then the migration starts all over again. So the eastern population winters in Mexico while the western population winters along the coast of California. Sounds simple, right? Well, not exactly. Reportedly, not all monarch populations make major migrations and some subspecies of the monarch make minor migrations or none at all. Additionally, some overwintering sites have been identified in Arizona and northern Florida. 
There are also some populations in Florida and the Caribbean that do not migrate, as well as another subspecies distributed in the Caribbean, Central America, and Northern South America. There are monarchs in Australia and New Zealand that migrate short distances. What it all boils down to is, research into these fascinating creatures is ongoing, and it appears the subject of monarch butterfly behavior is ever evolving. Milkweed is the sole host plant of the monarch butterfly. Females lay eggs on milkweed and milkweed only. Then, upon hatching, caterpillars eat the leaves of the milkweed plants. The leaves of milkweed contain compounds which negatively affect the heart if ingested. Once the caterpillars, which are immune to the plant's effects, eat the leaves, the larvae become toxic and the predators typically avoid them. It may seem like a no-brainer when it comes to the appearance of the monarch butterfly. Most people probably know that they're orange and black. However, there are some things that everyone should learn. First, while males and females are similar in appearance, there are ways to distinguish between the two. The female has thicker wing veins than the male, as seen here. However, the difference is less obvious on the underside of the wings. Additionally, the male has two visible black spots, one on each hind wing, as seen here. The spots are actually scent glands that produce pheromones. Monarch wingspans range from 3.5 to almost 5 inches wide. The monarch butterfly's Mexican wintering site wasn't located by scientists until 1975. Until then, the winter hideouts had been a secret known only to local villagers and landowners. Some conservationists believe the population of monarch butterflies has been drastically reduced in the past 20 or so years, due in large part to the decline of milkweed. They believe the use of herbicides, land development, and drought are thought to be major causes. However, other top researchers doubt the claim, saying it's not consistent with data collected by several long-term butterfly monitoring programs in the United States. Additionally, despite the creation of protected areas and reserves in Mexico, Illegal logging has been steadily shrinking the monarch's unique, critical habitat. Oh, hello! I'm Randy from Randy's Natural World. I hope you enjoyed the video on... Monarch butterflies. Yes, yes, that's it. Today I'm pretending to be a scientist. Maybe I'm doing research on a five o'clock shadow, I'm not sure. But that's neither here nor there. I'm hoping to speak to those of you who haven't subscribed yet. Here's a list of reasons why you should. It's free. You can't beat that price. Number two, quality content. Always quality content. Number three, YouTube allows unlimited subscriptions, so there's no reason not to. Anyway, number four, are you a procrastinator? There's no need to procrastinate. And I know what you're thinking. Randy, I'll subscribe when I get around to it. Well. Here's your round to it right here. Round to it. So go ahead and subscribe. Go ahead. A wise decision.